Cup JR87, which just hit our wall late last week. And this is a, a resolution that's really been um, a long time coming um, for some people. And it is not a simple little bill. It does not deal with a simple part of our history. And um, it is something that is well worth, I mean, certainly hearing this introduction, but also considering um, just as a quick reminder, this committee starting 10 years ago or so um, really took hold of the process of recognition and, and of state recognition because federal recognition was not open to our native populations. And so there was a real push uh, and a real lot of work done over two years to come up with a program of a state of state recognition that honored the the tribes and the clans that were that were out in Vermont that would be considered, um, while also requiring them to do the hard work to show this government that they are who they say they are. Um, again, not a simple process for anyone involved. And um, 10 years later, uh, four, four tribes have been recognized by the state. Um, but the history goes back so much further, um, and in this case, to a darker part of our history. So um, that's why this bill stays in our committee, or this subject stays, starts in our committee. Uh, and so we see Bill, we see JRH7 uh, and Representative Webb, who I've worked with for years, we came in at the same time, so a lot of this, these issues came up, um, not because Kate was, uh, Representative Webb was in our committee, but because she had constituents who were directly impacted by the work we were doing. Um, so if, you know, Kate, please just take us through, and then we'll have uh, Attorney Chern go through what this is as well. Sure. So I'm um, taking that off the screen, because you said you didn't want to. Well, yeah, I, didn't, I don't want to go through the resolution. Well, for the record, I'm Representative Kate Webb from Shelburne, and I'm here to introduce JRH7, a resolution apologizing to all Vermonters and their families who were harmed as a result of state-sanctioned, eugenically-inspired sterilization. Yesterday, January 27th, 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. This occasion honors those who survived while remembering those who perished in the Holocaust. I mention this today because Vermont has its own dark history. Regardless of how difficult or painful it is to recognize these actions, regardless of the fact that we were not present and did not participate, in this action so many years ago, our forebears did. Our institutions of higher learning did. Our legislature, of which we are members, did. It is the sins of the fathers delivered upon the next generation, and we are the next generation. We must honor the survivors of these actions and allow family stories to be told. Act one, an act relating to ethnic studies, may well help to be that vehicle. A bill that we passed last year. For true healing to occur, we must acknowledge that this was, what this was, and what caught, and the great suffering that it caused to Vermont citizens of the state, a state who was charged to protect them. Although the eugenics movement did not arise, did not rise to the level of destruction that the Holocaust did, it laid the framework of elimination of people who were seen by some confused stereotypic standard to be undesirable in our state. The 1931 Sterilization Act was passed by, this, legi by the, this legislative body, or this legislature, perhaps not this exact body, um, destroyed many lives, along with the hopes and dreams that children bring. Without children to carry the Abnaki communities, in a sense, extinction continues to occur. This was ultimately the basis of the Indian Child Welfare Act to protect <coughs> the culture. The Abnaki people who spoke um, to developing this resolution did not seek to shame anybody, demand anything, or tear down Vermont institutions. Instead, they asked that we act upon this resolution because it is morally the right thing to do, and it promotes healing, and we must learn from history and never allow this history to be repeated. 
UVM realized that an apology for their part and realized an apology for their part on the eugenics movement had to be issued in order to start the healing process. UVM decided to partner with Chief Don Stevens and the Admackey community to uplift everyone looking toward the future. Many of us participated in the June 21st event. You and I did, Representative Stevens, for example. To hear President Tom Sullivan and the UVM board members who stated things such as, I believe it is appropriate to state unequivocally that the Eugenic Survey of Vermont supported by the UVM by UVM on its campus contributed to the stereotyping prosecution and in some cases state sponsored sterilization of members of certain groups sanctioned by law in the state of Vermont in 1931 the destructive impacts of eugenics have been through generations a deeply painful experience so let us move forward together as an educational community to ensure that such a grave injustice never be repeated by providing relevant, accessible, educational uh, initiatives going forward. We have the opportunity to uh, better come to terms with the past and learn from these tragic lessons. So UVM sort of, for those of us that participated in the recognition 10 years ago, um, this was the next, this is the next step. This is our next level. Um, so, and let us here with this resolution follow UVM's lead and adopt a resolution to apologize for the role that we, the legislature, paid. We must admit when we make mistakes and take steps to always do better. I challenge the Vermont House of Representatives to follow UVM's lead and address the resolution to apologize for the role that we, the Vermont legislature, played. And it comes to you uh, almost in the form of a bill because of the challenges that broke down years ago when I believe it was Representative Donahue brought this forward and that people could just not come to consensus. So we're going for another try. And thank you for the ability to present this. Thank you for your introduction. Um, Any questions for Representative Webb before we turn it back to untangle the education <laughs> Representative Thank you for this, and I, I am a co signer of this, mm -hmm. and, but I, I'm also um, want to acknowledge the horror of the other groups as well that were targeted here the mixed race, French Canadian heritage, the poor, and you know, disabilities. So it's, you know, it annihilated our. Abenaki tribes, but it also completely destroyed the lives of all of these other people that are in here as well. I mean, it's, it is something that, um, you know, so there's a, a, there's a lot of apology here, and I appreciate that we're trying to move this forward, and I'm with you on this. And again, this was a this was an identified group, not because of their behavior, not because of anything. It was because they were an identified group based on being Abnaki. I believe they were referred to in the eugenics study as um, even more derogatorily as basket weavers. Right. Times, um, that's just. Um, <laughs> I mean, we will. If, when we follow up on this, we'll, we'll get a history of that movement. We'll, we'll just get an idea of what the eugenics movement was, which at the time was considered cutting edge. You know, I when I was in high school, I had an AFS student um, from Germany living with us. And this was in 1968-69. Of course, I was only two when I was in high school, of course, in 68. <laughs> um, but uh, she, that was, you know, 20, a little more than 20 years after World War II, and they knew nothing, she knew nothing about what had happened in the Holocaust. And she said it was painful having everybody asking her about that, and she had nothing to say. I look at how far Germany has come in recognizing, and it, it's, it, it's in the forefront now. Um, of their conversations, and it's time for us. Thank you. Um, Michael? Sure. Okay. 
Good afternoon. My name is Michael Chernick. I'm on the staff of the Legislative Council. I'm the attorney that drafted this resolution and also the earlier iterations of it back in 2009-2010. The resolution is titled, Joint Resolution Apologizing and Expressing Sincere Condolences to All Vermonters and Their Families Who Were Harmed as a Result of State-Sanctioned and Eugenically Inspired Sterilization. And it reads, in 1925, UVM zoology professor Henry F. Perkins established the dubious eugenic survey of Vermont to measure defective behavior, depravity, and immorality, and it targeted members of Abenaki bands, Vermonters of mixed racial or French Canadian heritage, the poor, and persons with disabilities. And whereas the General Assembly adopted 1931 Acts and Resolves Number 174, that's the bill that Representative Webb was referring to, an act for human better by voluntary sterilization to prevent the procreation of individuals belonging predominantly to these groups, and whereas this eugenically inspired legislation resulted in the sterilization of Vermonters, often without their fully informed voluntary consent, and whereas the devastating impact on the lives of the sterilized individuals and their families was irreversible, and whereas on June 21, 2019, the University of Vermont issued a formal statement of sincere apology for its unethical and regrettable eugenics role, and the General Assembly, on behalf of the state of Vermont, should issue a similar apology. Now, therefore, be it, resolved by the Senate House of Representatives, that the General Assembly apologizes and expresses its sincere sorrow to all Vermonters and their families who were harmed as a result of state-sanctioned and eugenically inspired sterilization. End of resolution. And that is it. For Michael. So Michael again, I'm, I'm sorry, is this is this passed by the Senate already? From the this Senate? resolution is new, this biennium. There was a resolution in the 9-10 biennium, and again in the 11-12 biennium that never left the House, never made it to the floor. Okay. There were lots of discussions that went on at the time, as Representative Webb alluded to and it died in committee. Okay. But this has this is the first reading that I have done of this resolution in any committee, in either chamber. Thank it's you. a House okay. resolution. And just as a matter of fact, uh, a policy resolution can only have sponsorship from one chamber. Okay, thanks. And so just to be clear though, I mean, and this is, this is clear, I think, through your language that I, I believe that Representative Donahue was... Um, she was a sponsor back in 9 through 11, yes. And it was, and her primary focus was for um, the depraved, I, however people were defective. Um, I think there was a, a focus on mental health, but did not ignore... It certainly else. references to Abenaki communities were in the prior versions of the in all the versions going all the way back to nine. It was this, always some reference is, to. But this is holistic. This is this is apologizing. This for the program. This pro this, this version, it. the way I drafted it, apologizes to any and every group. It certainly highlights the impact on the Abenaki communities on the French Canadian community, on mixed race communities, and on individuals who had various disabilities, be they physical or mental. But it's meant to be an apology to everyone who was impacted. Um, I don't I don't really have more to add at this time. If you need me for further drafting at any point along the way, you know how to reach me. Yes. Okay, Michael. <clears throat> sure. Um, still on the record, committee, any, any thoughts amongst ourselves right now? That was a pretty powerful introduction. Yeah, it really was. Um, I think, is this something, I mean, we'll discuss this further, but I mean, I'm, I'm inclined to want to do more research to make sure that this is the right thing to do or say. Um, 
to go below beyond my heart and um, to get more um, background on you know, what we're talking about because I think for a lot of people it may not be um, the knowledge of what this this was um, is again is a dark you know, it's a dark period of our life of our of our state's history. Um, but if this is something that we want to take up, then we, we can do the work on it and make sure it's not as broad. To, to borrow your, your concerns earlier, to, to make sure that it's as specific as we need it to be in order to feel like it's the right words um, to express our regrets. I totally support that. I truly support too, and I'd like to know more about the scope of it, and if there are other groups not named in the resolution who are perhaps affected, you know, I'd like to know if know the history of it better. There is a history book called Reading Better Vermonters that was written um, probably 15 years ago now. Um, we, can, we can find some, we can access that information, you know, mm -hmm. and that gives, and, and then there is this, and I don't ever want to use in this in the case of this to, you know, to, to create balance. You know, there's, you know, it's, it's easy to say, but to be fair, in 1927, this might have been, and it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it was a dubious process <coughs> before it was accepted here. And so, learning about what that means and what it and what it again what it did to, to unsuspecting people without their consent over a long period of time. I mean, I think that there were still some laws, kind of like what we find in some of the laws or some sections. There's DNA of this of this program in our statutes until the '70s. And so, you know, while the program may have ended, there were pieces statutorily that were still in, in our work, in our, in our statute. And it's just crazy to think that, but that's, you know, that's kind of what we're, that we're doing with here. So. John? Uh, U, UVM re, renamed their library. Right. They took the, Dr. Perkins' name off the library. Really or how? Yeah. One of the two. I'm sorry? Bailey or how. Okay. I don't know what you want. Um, you know, as, as part of this, so I, I think if, I don't feel like we need to do more research myself, yeah. but if the committee does, uh, I think we should invite someone in from UVM who's kind of went through this process of, of what they did. Um, you know, the, the devastation to all these communities, and I would just say from the disability perspective, this is profound that people are sterilized against their will or without any kind of consent at, with all of the people. So I, I love that this is what the law stated and it devastated all of these communities and that we are apologizing to all of them. And I would say it says to all Vermonters that's been impacted by this because if a family had a disabled child, that child was sterilized. You know, and so it impacts, so it's, um, I, I think this is well thought out. I think this is overdue, and I don't think we need to spend too much more time, um, you know, kind of revealing the inhumanity of this myself. But And, and, I, and I hear that, and I, I hear that mostly with my heart, um, but that sense of making sure that when we present this on the floor and to the public and to the world, that we have a clear understanding. I mean, this committee, this committee in particular, will be given a privilege to look at the effects of this in a way that I, just makes it, I think, a little bit deeper. A, a deeper understanding is always what we'll seek. You know, and, and, and this is an opportunity to do that. Um, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that we're going to take months or even we take, we'll take the time that we need in order to hear what we need to hear and be prepared to present this on the floor and make and make sure that when we talk about this we're talking about this as the right thing to do um, yeah i think one of the benefits of, of hearing testimony on this is that we can hear from folks uh, whose families have been affected by this program 
um, and by this, um, uh, by what we've done as a state. Um, and, and there's not that many opportunities for folks to uh, express the violence that has been done um, to past generations. And so that's one of the things that I value about uh, taking a testimony about uh, this season program. I'd like to add to that because what you just said reminded me uh, we had the testimony we had in open burn pits and how gut wrenching that was. And then just last week, the testimony on fire blocking and the firemen who had lost two children in a fire. And to, to put that human face on it, I think that's really important. It, it adds so much depth to what we're trying to do. When Tropical Storm Irene closed the state hospital, it did something that men and women couldn't do, which was to close that place down. And mm -hmm. to walk through, I don't know if you, if, who's been able to see it, who was able, who was able to see it. Most of the remnants of what was there is gone now. Um, but the tunnels that were in that building that went from Randall Street all the way out to the back end of the Winooski River where someone could be transported underground, could be chained against the wall, could be asked, to, you know, just the place was, and no matter when it was new, the place was a very distinct chamber for a lot of people of horrors. And again, as much good work was done there and many different pieces of mental health care, there was still the state hospital for the insane, and this still happened there. Um, I was not the only one who was not only happy that it was closed, but also disappointed that it took a, an act of God, if you will, to close it um, because it was something that we couldn't do. And, um, this is this is another piece of the larger puzzle of of coming to terms with things that the body that we work with and work for um, uh, approved of, and um, you can, I'm sure. Well, enough said. I think it's I think it's really again with my heart I can vote this out today. And um, but I'm not. We're gonna we're gonna take a closer look at it and and learn what we need to learn on this issue. So I think part of the learning of that should be um, <coughs> who proposed or the creator of the eugenics movement, who that was, what the purpose was, who was targeted, and how it obviously affected Vermont. Well, again, yes. Um, and the, the history called Reading Better Vermonters certainly gives a pretty broad view of and stu mm -hmm. study of that. But um, we'll start looking. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, thank you everyone who came to hear the introduction. Um, with that, I think we'll go off the record.